Yo, what's going on people? It's your boy Ape Hancho back at you again with another video. And today I want to ask you guys a question, and that question would be what do you value a human life at? Forget about the items they own or even who they are. Now some may say one million pounds, others one billion pounds, but realistically, human life is one of the most valuable things on this planet. Yes, even though you do spend a short amount of time on the earth, the chances of you being able to have that short period of time is about 1 in 400 trillion, according to some scientists. In other words, the chances of you becoming a human is extremely lucky and we all get one chance in life. Now, the reason I say this is because this next story we're about to get into, the people involved valued a human life at just £20. At some point at the start of December of 2019, 41-year-old John Wright had went to purchase crack cocaine from a house in, in the Bowsfield area of Stockton. Stockton, for you guys who don't know, is in the north of England, close by to Middlesbrough. Now, when John went to go buy this crack cocaine, he would purchase it off two men, 21-year-old John Jordan Vaughan and 22 year old Keenan Johnson. For the following weeks, John would make frequent purchases of the pair, and it would have been around the 27th of December 2019 that he would once again go to purchase crack cocaine off the pair, but this time it was alleged that John had paid them with a counterfeit £20 note. Once the three had done their deal, though, they of course went their separate ways, but later on that day, the pair had realised that John had allegedly just paid them with this fake £20 note. After becoming angry at the fact that he used counterfeit money and in turn, they seen it as he was robbing them, the pair said that they wanted to teach him a lesson, and at the same time show other dealers and users that they wasn't to be messed with. I'm unsure because it doesn't explain whether John Wright went to go and meet them or if the pair had randomly bumped into him, but one thing for certain is, around two days later when the three came face to face again, it would prove fatal for John. At around 1.40pm, emergency services were called to Parliament Street to reports of a stabbing. They arrived within five minutes, but of course the pair had fled the scene, and John was unfortunately pronounced dead at around 2pm. A day later, the pair would go on to be arrested by police, and would later go on to be charged for John's murder. Keenan Johnson would go on to be charged with possession of an offensive weapon in a public place, i.e., an extendable cosh or extendable button, whilst Jordan Vaughan would go on to be charged with having a bladed article or a knife. They would both plead guilty in relation to their weapon offences, but they both went on to deny murder, and so a trial was to take place at Teesside Crown Court at the start of December this year, 2020. In court, prosecutor John Elvidge QC would go on to explain how, allegedly, John had robbed the pair and a reference was made to a drug debt. He said the purpose of their work was to demonstrate the consequences of robbing or shortchanging or diddling those concerned in the supply of controlled drugs in Stockton. By doing what they did, they were enhancing their own reputations, they acted together during and after they deliberately attacked John Wright. The jury were also told again how both men had been armed with weapons and like we've already explained before, Keenan was armed with an extendable baton or kosh and Jordan was armed with a knife. The prosecution said each drew and used his weapon even though they were younger men and there were two of them against one older man. Unlike them though, in regards to John, he wasn't walking the streets of Stockton armed with a weapon. Talking of the attack, although no CCTV evidence picked up the murder, the prosecution said they deliberately decided to draw and use them against John Wright because they intended to cause him really serious harm, and they did. Adding, Jordan Vaughan and Keenan Johnson did nothing to help Mr. Wright after he had been stabbed. Instead, they were preoccupied in making steps to avoid being caught for, say, the prosecution, their cowardly attack. The court was told that the weapons were discarded of after the attack had taken place and one year on, they were still yet to be found. Talking of the aftermath of the stabbing, the prosecution said that John had managed to make his way from the residential area where he'd been stabbed to Parliament Street where he collapsed. He then goes on to tell the jury about the moments that the emergency services were called and then John unfortunately dying a short while later, but again we've already spoke about that earlier on in the video. 
In a bit more detail of John's last moments though, the prosecution said John had already suffered massive blood loss into his chest cavity as he'd been stabbed in the back. In regards to Keenan and Jordan's moments after the murder, the prosecution said that they visited Khan's fish shop on Bowesfield Lane where Keenan disposed of Jordan's tracksuit bottoms in an outside bin. They then go into a taxi from Bowesfield Lane to Middlesbrough bus station to try and evade capture as they thought the police might have been looking for them. When they reached the bus station, they went to look for accommodation and at around 7.15pm they entered the Holiday Inn on Albert Road. It was said that they asked the reception if they could pay in cash but when the receptionist asked for a bank card to go on file or any identification they were unable or unwilling to provide it. They were said to have kept budging and offered to pay whatever to get into a room but without identification a room couldn't be offered. Once they leave the hotel the footsteps are unclear as to what they did but the following day they both ended up back in Stockton. Police would go on to arrest Jordan Vaughan on Stockton High Street and Keenan was arrested at an address on London Derry Road in the town. It's unclear who was arrested first but from reports they was arrested within hours of each other. The prosecution said what he expects both defendants defences to be in this case. He said so far as Jordan Vaughan is concerned we understand that he will now say that he was involved in an altercation with John Wright and he did stab him but he did so acting in self-defence. Keenan Johnson's case will be that while he did assault John Wright he wasn't involved in any joint attack and he didn't intend that John Wright would be caused really serious harm. The prosecution say although it was Jordan Vaughan that inflicted the fatal stab wound, both defendants are jointly responsible for the murder of John Wright because they both intended that he should be unlawfully attacked. They jointly attacked him and each intended to support the other in the attack. At a further court date, taxi driver Mohammed Faisal, who drove the pair from Stockton to Middlesbrough, gave evidence and it was heard that he recognised Keenan from school. He told the court how he asked them what was going on when he reached Parliament Street and Keenan told him that someone had been attacked. When he was asked by the prosecution what Keenan was doing as he was driving along, he replied on the phone and reading about what had happened. Mohammed confirmed that he remembered Keenan saying, he's dead, he's dead, and passing the phone to Jordan. He said, I couldn't really hear, they were talking quietly to each other. The prosecution asked if there was any mention of clothing or apparel whilst in the taxi, and he responded they were talking about getting new trainers, and asked if JD was open. When asked who said this, he replied Keenan. He also mentioned that Keenan had mentioned about getting a hotel and asked if Mohammed knew somewhere where they would accept cash and wouldn't take ID. Keenan also told Mohammed that he needed to get out of Stockton. At a further court hearing, Keenan gave evidence and he explained that he was a drugs runner and that John had been a customer, which we've already spoken about. Talking about the 29th of December, the day that John had been murdered, Keenan said, I pretended to be on my mobile phone and walked behind John Wright. He was looking away from us. He goes on to explain he extended the cosh by shaking it and said, Then I hit John on the back of the legs two or three times, then on the arms as well. He was shouting why I was doing it and I said, you know why I've done it. Keenan said he didn't intend to cause John serious harm and the violence was just to warn him off so he wouldn't do it again. He said he then started to walk away but he looked back and Jordan and John had started to shout at each other. He claimed he saw John pick something up which looked like a brick, adding then I saw Jordan go towards him and grab him. He said he did not know John had been stabbed until later in the day and had not seen Jordan in possession of a knife. After the attack took place, as you know, the pair went to Khan's fish bar and CCTV picks them up doing a fist bump.
Asked whether the fist bump was a celebration in relation to what had happened, Keenan said no, not at all. Jordan took a picture of Keenan in the fish bar and asked why the picture was taken and he said so he could put it on Instagram because that's what people do. When being cross-examined by the prosecution, it was suggested that John was killed because he robbed the pair. To this, Keenan said no. He was then asked, then why was he killed? To which he replied, I don't know, but it wasn't that. Jordan Vaughan would give evidence in court and he would go on to say that he was acting in self-defense because he feared that he was going to be struck with the brick, which Keenan had already explained to the court. Jordan would go on to explain that the person that they were working for had told them to give John a slap for paying with counterfeit money and even though John ended up dead he meant no serious harm to be caused. Jordan said he started to carry a knife for his own protection after he himself was attacked three times with weapons and sliced across the face while selling drugs in the past. Jordan pretty much gives the same story as Keenan and said that upon seeing John Keenan had quote unquote clipped him and then ran behind him and hit him in the back of the legs with a cosh a few times and then walked off. Jordan said John was still at the scene and he goes on to say that he was following Keenan and then Jordan said he turned around to see if John was gone but according to Jordan he came at him with a house brick. Jordan said he then stumbled back and they both fell onto the floor. He said he was sitting on top of me, he went to pick the brick back up to hit it across my head, that's what I thought was going to happen. I pulled out the knife for my own protection and stabbed it in his back. After a trial at Teesside Crown Court, Jordan was found guilty of murder and was sentenced to life with a minimum term of 21 and a half years, whilst Keenan was found guilty of manslaughter and was jailed for 11 years and nine months. John's niece would go on to say this outside of court. So it's pretty sad to think that this all escalated from John allegedly paying them with a counterfeit £20 note. Now for all we know and will never truly know, John might not have actually known it was a counterfeit £20 note but again because these guys wanted to quote unquote assert their dominance and show other drug dealers and drug users that they weren't to be messed with, it escalated to the point where unfortunately John went on to lose his life and again no human life is really worth any money let alone 20 pounds but I do want to take this time out just to say rest in peace to John and my condolences do go out to his family at this current time but let me know what you guys think of this down in the comment section below give the video a little like and if you want the latest drill street and music news out of the UK be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell it's been your boy Pancho and I'm out